Hi everybody. Yesterday I put together a video demonstrating how to obtain Andrew Hayes Omega macro and how to use that macro in order to generate an estimate of composite reliability for a multi-item scale measuring a single factor and we basically generated McDonald's Omega. And what I wanted to do in this video was just to expand on uh, that discussion uh, by showing you a few additional computational details and then also uh, demonstrating a few additional um, features associated with the macro. So if you haven't already taken a look at the other video, um, I encourage you to do so. I'll, I will include a link underneath the video description so you can do that. Um, so what we're going to do is just start off with, uh, in this particular video, by uh, rerunning the analysis, talking through uh, some additional details, and then again I'll show you a few additional um, sort of bells and whistles, if you will. So I mentioned yesterday that when you download a copy of the macro, it actually downloads um, in a zip file. So it's incorporated in there along with several other uh, files. And one of the files is an SPSS data set uh, that contains these variables right here, basically blurt1 all the way to blurt8. And basically these are items uh, that individuals responded to uh, from the blurtaciousness scale. They responded on using a scale from 1 being strongly disagree to 5 being strongly agree. And the blurt uh, 2R, blurt 3R, blurt 5R, and 7R, these are all reverse coded items. So, um, you know, once you've installed the macro, we'll go ahead and generate uh, McDonald's Omega. Once you've installed the macro, all you have to do is go to Analyze Scale Omega right here. Uh, you'll move your variables over uh, into the items box, and then the reliability measure is McDonald's Omega, and the default is ML, and that means that's referring to uh, the fact that we are using maximum likelihood factor analysis. Um, essentially forcing a one-factor solution and then using the um, the uh, unstandardized factor loadings and the uniquenesses associated with that analysis when computing uh, McDonald's Omega. So that's what this is right here. So let's go ahead and run this. I'm going to click on OK and we're going to get the same thing that we talked about yesterday uh, in terms of our output. So the Omega uh, uh, value is 0.785. Uh, so that's McDonald's Omega and you can see down below that we have information associated with each of the items. So we have the item means, standard deviations, these are the unstandardized factor loadings right here and these are the uniquenesses um, associated with that maximum likelihood solution. So basically uh, the formula uh, that we talked about in the previous video uh, looks uh, pretty much like um, this one above. So, you know, basically what we have right here is omega is equal to the numerator is the sum of the factor loadings and then we square them. The denominator is essentially that part of the, that, uh, the numerator plus the sum of the uh, measurement errors. Basically in this case our, our uniquenesses. So that's all it is to it. So if we go down and we look at our uh, column of the unstandardized factor loadings and our uniquenesses right here. Uh, basically, uh, all we do is we sum up these factor loadings and then square that sum. And then we sum up the uniquenesses uh, right here. And then we just uh, essentially take then uh, you know this value right here and place it over the sum of this value and this value. So that's basically all there is to it. And I uh, basically walked you through uh, those computations using an Excel file in yesterday's presentation. Now as part of the output that's generated, you'll see if you scroll up, uh, you not only get the Omega or McDonald's Omega information, but you also get a factor analysis or factor analysis results as well. So basically this is from a maximum likelihood factor analysis. You can see right here it's referring to extraction method maximum likelihood. And so if you look up here, you'll see you've got uh, a, a table of descriptive statistics associated with each of the items as well as a sum score. Uh, and so you've got means and variances associated with our items and that we're going to be pivoting off of the variances uh, from this table uh, as we continue on. 
as we scroll down you can see that we have um, a table containing our communality estimates uh, in the extraction column this is the these are the communalities following extraction communalities are basically the re representing the proportion of variation in uh, the indicator variables that's accounted for by um, our factor and so you can see that uh, remember that we forced a, a one factor solution and so essentially then that factor is accounting for about 43 percent of the variation in blurt 1 uh, 38.3 percent of the variation in blurt uh, 2r and so forth as we scroll down a little bit further we get our um, our factor analysis uh, summary table here and you can see that one factor was forced this is the eigenvalue associated with it as well as the percentage of variance accounted for and then when we scroll down below you can see we have our factor matrix and these are um, essentially this is a, a structure matrix reflecting the correlations between each of the indicator variables and uh, the latent factors so this these are presented uh, as correlations now one question you may have is how do we get from our uh, these correlations basically our standardized coefficients to a matrix of or uh, to a matrix uh, containing uh, unstandardized coefficients basically our unstandardized uh, factor loadings down here and uh, the answer is it's actually pretty easy um, basically all it entails is taking our standardized coefficients and multiplying them by the standard deviations of our variables so to kind of demonstrate that uh, what I'll do is I'll walk you through uh, another Excel spreadsheet uh, that I put together uh, and we'll just uh, we'll transform uh, this factor matrix into um, a matrix of unstandardized factor loadings which are will, which will be these from this table down here so to do this what I'll do is I'm going to double click in here and uh, just in the interest of time we'll just go ahead and copy that and then we'll go under my Excel file here and I've gone ahead and created a column for standardized factor loadings and there they are um, I had also taken the variances uh, from that descriptives table and um, taking the square root of that and that's going to give you give you the standard deviations and those are the standard deviations that you see in that uh, table uh, for related to the items uh, following the um, McDonald's Omega uh, coefficient and then you can see I've got right here the unstandardized loadings and basically all they, these are is just we just compute them by taking our standardized loadings multiplying them by the standard deviations and that's what gets us our unstandardized loadings and uh, just to uh, facilitate comparison here you can see right here there's our 0.663 for blurt 1 there's our unstandardized loading right there the 0.642 uh, there it is again for the unstandardized loading and basically all of these values are going to be um, pretty much analogous to the unstandardized loadings that I've computed um, just now okay so under certain circumstances uh, you might uh, be interested in generating um, a standardized um, in index of reliability so let's go under scale Omega again and let's say that we uh, select standardized reliability and we uh, click on OK right here and we get our uh, results so you can see down below we get our standardized reliability and it's 0.791 so you might be asking how did we get um, this particular Omega value and basically we are still taking information from our factor analysis above so I'll go back into my Excel spreadsheet right here and you can see once again we have our standardized factor loadings so if we square those factor loadings we end up with the communality estimates that were given right here and if we t uh, subtract uh, the communalities from one we get the proportion of variation in each of the indicator variables that's not accounted for by that forced uh, single factor and from there all we have to do is use our little formula again in order to calculate uh, McDonald's Omega the standardized version so in this particular case you can see here that I've taken the standardized factor loadings and sum them up right here and if I square that sum this is the value that I get and this is the value that appears in the numerator of the formula um, and then we have the uniquenesses if I uh, sum up these values right here uh, I get my uh, sum of the errors 
and so that's that's uh, basically going to be computing uh, the value that's a computed value for this portion of our formula right here so then if I take um, my uh, sum of the uh, of the uh, squared or excuse me the the sum squared and uh, place that over the sum squared plus the sum error then that's what gets me my McDonald's Omega standardized and uh, just once again to facilitate some comparison here you can see we have 0.791 for our omega and down here it's 0 0.790788 so it'd be rounded off to 0.791 and uh, you'll also see uh, in terms of the loadings that are given right here these are the same loadings that we have uh, just uh, input right here and then the uh, error variances basically our uniquenesses these are the same values that you find in this column uh, that we were just working from and uh, what I'll do is I will include um, uh, a link to the Excel file that I'm using uh, to compute this. So I'll have all these computations in that uh, if you want to study it further. Okay, so um, let's look at a couple of other options that are available. So I'm going to go back under Omega right here. And uh, so another option if you want to compute reliability is this McDonald's Omega HA. So this is using uh, closed form um, equations. And basically, um, this is just an alternative to the ML approach. Uh, one nice thing about this particular approach is that you can generate uh, bootstrap confidence intervals for the reliability estimate. So to kind of show you what I mean by that, let me click off of standardized reliability here. Um, if I click on generate 95% confidence interval for reliability, the default is uh, 1,000 bootstrap samples. Uh, if I click on that, you'll see that in our output we have uh, an omega estimate as well as there's a bootstrap standard error and then a bootstrap 95% uh, confidence interval so it produces an interval estimate of uh, our composite reliability. If we tried to do this by the way using um, McDonald's Omega we'll get nothing so I'll click on that and show you uh, nothing comes out of that so you can't use the bootstrap option with um, the maximum likelihood uh, approach to uh, McDonald's Omega. Um, I will say too that if you used uh, Chromebox Alpha you can use the bootstrap approach there. So I'll show you right there we have Chromebox Alpha that's given as well as the bootstrap uh, results in terms of the standard error and the confidence interval. Okay, um, and one final option that I thought I would mention, it's kind of an interesting option, I've never quite seen this before, but um, in, uh, in the Omega uh, macro, you can actually generate all possible subsets with respect to the items and then kind of make a comparison with respect to the reliabilities that are generated. Um, so, you know, if you're trying to look for items that maybe are not functioning quite as well, and uh, you want to just kind of include those items that, um, that yield the strongest reliability, this would be a way that you could do this. Again, you're not going to be able to use this if you um, have McDonald's Omega ML selected. Um, so if you have McDonald's Omega HA selected, that you can. So I'll just kind of show you. I'll go ahead and click on OK and we'll take a look at, look at our output. And you can see that in addition to the Omega that we have for, um, for the full set of items, you can see down below um, the output you can see it's given with zeros and ones and then you've got a column of omegas and actually the omegas are uh, rank ordered uh, for, you know so it starts off with the highest omega and then uh, decreases uh, throughout so you can see you know which items are are, um, are included in the computation of omega so to give you an example let's uh, look at the first uh, omega it's 0.931 and you can see that item 4 uh, that's given a code of 1 item 5 R a code of 1 and an item 8 whereas the remaining ones uh, have zeros so those uh, remaining ones would not be included in the computation of Omega so this is actually a three item scale right here with 4 5 R and 8 so let's uh, compute the reliability um, just for that so it's uh, 4, 5, and 8. So we'll go back in here, and I'll just go ahead and reset this, and we'll use 4, 5R, 
and 8 right here and then we'll click back on Omega uh, McDonald's Omega HA and uh, we'll click on OK and so now you can see the Omega is 0.931 for that. So uh, as another example, let's say that we are looking at the second omega, it's 0.827, and you can see it's got items 2, 5, and 8. So let's rerun this using those three uh, items, 2, 5, and 8. So we'll take these out, reset that, and we'll go with 2, 5, and 8. And again, we'll select McDonald's Omega HA and we'll click OK. And so now you can see it's the 0.827, which is what we saw uh, previously. OK, so that uh, pretty well wraps up this um, demonstration, and I appreciate you watching.